Welcome, everybody, to the February Transmart Foundation Monthly Community Call. As usual, we start at five past the hour. We have a number of people that have connected in for today's call, so we'll get right to it. Our agenda today is, um, as usual, an update on foundation activities that uh, Keith Elliston, our CEO, will provide. We have the distinct pleasure of uh, an update from the CTMM Trade Initiative that Jan Willem will provide for us. Case van Wach from The Hive will uh, share with the community the uh, activities of the Architecture Roadmap Workshop that occurred uh, a few weeks ago and how that fits in with uh, our plans for a 2.0 Architecture and Roadmap. Terry Weymouth will provide an update on the uh, bug fixathon uh, activity that is going on, and then I will follow that up with information about uh, a training program that uh, Rudy Potent Zone is putting together, as well as a review of our 2015 calendar activities. So I'd like to turn it over to Keith and give him an opportunity to talk about foundation updates. Thanks, Kevin. <coughs> Next slide. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to do is, uh, is welcome uh, a new team member on board. Uh, we've uh, brought on board Steve Johnson, uh, a CPA, who will be helping us with uh, a number of things along our finance uh, pathway. Uh, in particular, uh, as our new VP of Finance, he will be managing the membership program in terms of renewals, uh, new memberships, and, and key things around that, helping us with our financial forecasting, uh, financial strategies, and uh, financial reporting, and more. Uh, and so this is, uh, he'll be working very closely and intimately with Ashley uh, George, our CFO, uh, who is at uh, GSK and also the CFO of Pistoy Alliance, and uh, doing a lot of the, the basic blocking and tackling, working with the operations team and uh, making sure that we uh, are always up to date and moving forward on our financial programs. Uh, Steve's got great experience uh, for this role. Um, he's a professional CFO. He was the CFO at Centra Software at Travalia, at uh, ManageSoft, and a number of other uh, technology companies. Uh, he's also been involved in a number of nonprofit boards of directors, uh, in fact, with one serving on the audit committee. Uh, so he's very experienced at that as well. Uh, and he uh, has a CPA and uh, some significant experience working with one of the big five, or I guess it's the big four these days, uh, PwC. So I'd like to welcome Steve on board. I don't know if Steve's online, if he can say hello. Kevin? Steve is online. Uh, Steve? Uh, Steve may have muted himself, so wh why, don't, why don't we continue on, and if he can join us, uh, we'll give him an opportunity to say a few words to our, our community. That sounds great. Um, in addition, uh, those of you um, who deal with some of the issues around renewals and whatnot will be hearing from Steve directly, and you'll certainly see him around. Uh, in the things that we do with the foundation. Uh, um, I just unmuted oh, sure. myself, Keith. Uh, so uh, I apologize for that. I was trying to figure out which one I had muted on the list. Um, uh, so uh, thank you, Keith, for the introduction. Um, I hope to get to know everybody in the community. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I think the foundation is doing great work, and uh, I look forward to uh, uh, helping the organization in, in uh, not only the financial area but the operational area as well to uh, have a, uh, a solid uh, uh, reporting system and as well uh, to be able to uh, provide uh, to the members uh, the information that they uh, would like to see. Fantastic. So welcome aboard, Steve. Uh, it's great to, great to have you on board. Um, Thank already you. Having a, you're already having a great impact on a number of things around the membership program and renewal, so I appreciate the efforts there. Thanks. Uh, other quick updates. Um, uh, one of the, the big things for us, and I think uh, Kevin has this in the calendar, but uh, Rudy Potent Zone is out in San Francisco um, manning the Transmart Foundation exhibit booth at the Molecular Medicine Tri Conference. Uh, this is our first exhibit booth. It's kind of exciting for us. Uh, we're out there working to you know, ensure that our marketing efforts are, are having impact and, and looking for new ways to drive that. So um, as you all might recall, we initiated a, a social media uh, campaign and, and effort um, uh, at the beginning of the year. And uh, with the various things that we've set up on the website, 
And we'll be looking to see how uh, these marketing investments pay off in terms of uh, activity on the website through Google Analytics. So we're pretty excited. It's our first exhibit booth. Um, we will be doing another exhibit at BioIT World, which will give everyone a chance to stop by and say hello. And any of you that are at the Molecular Medicine Tri Conference, you know, please stop down and say hi to Rudy. Uh, take a look at what we're doing there, and, and certainly give us any feedback on, on your thoughts. Um, we have a number of data funds in the planning process currently. We're working with, as we've mentioned in the past, the Michael J. Fox Foundation uh, on a data thon around uh, the Alzheimer's uh, and Parkinson's data sets that Michael J. Fox has sponsored. Those are the ADNI and PPMI data sets. Uh, the uh, Transmart version 1.2 instance of those are, are nearly complete, and we'll be hearing more about that uh, in the near future, uh, and we're working forward. Uh, we also are in discussions with uh, Orion BioNetworks about having a, a data-thon with them around their multiple sclerosis data sets that are in Transmart. So uh, pretty excited about moving you know, our hackathon type approaches from development and testing into data analysis and, and look for some more exciting efforts there. If anyone else is interested in, in, uh, in these data-thons, you know, please contact me or, or contact Kevin and we can talk to you more about them. And then uh, another key of, uh, effort here is, is we've been setting up the organizing committee for the annual meeting. Uh, the annual meeting takes place in uh, October. Uh, this year will be in Europe. We have uh, three venues that we've been uh, going through and, and doing our site, uh, finalizing our site, site selection for. And so we hope to get that done in the, in the very near future. Uh, we've got a, a two key uh, chairs setting up the organizing committee. Uh, Kevin Smith uh, representing the community committee and representing the past host uh, organization at University of Michigan is uh, working with Sherry Cow uh, from the, the community committee and they are organizing the uh, organizing committee for the annual meeting. So if you have an interest in that, contact Kevin or Sherry. Um, glad to have you involved there and, uh, and help us set up uh, the meeting as we go forward. Uh, pretty active month. It's only been a, a few weeks. We had uh, our last community called uh, I think just three weeks ago. Uh, we're still digging out here in Boston, so that's one of the things that we're spending our time on. But uh, the foundation has is, is got a lot of uh, nice activities going. It's going to be a very busy, busy, busy year. Uh, with that, Kevin, let me, uh, let me turn this back to you, and uh, you can take us through the, uh, the presentations. Great. Thank you, Keith. So again, it's, it's the foundation's distinct pleasure uh, for Jan Willem Boyton from the CTMM Trade uh, Project to provide an update uh, about their activities within the community. Um, it has been, I think, a, a while since uh, Jan Willem has done that. So Jan Willem, I've unmuted you, and, and so if you could, uh, we'd love for you to take us through the slides you've prepared today. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Very well. Thanks. OK, could you go to the next slide, please? So um, I kind of assume that, um, that most people in the audience know the, uh, the trade project by now. Uh, we have done a couple of these presentations, both in this call and in, uh, in the uh, annual meetings. Uh, but I included two or three slides uh, as, as a fresh up, uh, as a reminder. Um, so trade is a, a Dutch initiative. Um, it's a public-private consortium, and it's particularly focused on um, it's the, the needs of translational research projects, or the IT needs of those projects. Uh, there are many partners involved, uh, large and small, all Dutch uh, uni university medical centers, but also charities like uh, the Cancer and the Heart uh, Foundation. Uh, so you see the, the logo, uh, logo soup uh, here. Um, yeah, next slide, please. And um, yeah, the, the particular uh, focus of the, of the project is um, to, to serve the, the translational scientists from the beginning till the end. So the, the, the workflow, as you see it in the, in the project, uh, starting with the patient entering the hospital and, uh, and ending uh, with the data analysis, data integration. And um, so we both serve the data acquisition, uh, so the clinical data acquisition, and also the uh, experimental molecular, oh, you're going very fast now. So. <laughs> um, and the, um, uh, the sample acquisition, and, um, and at the heart is the data integration where the researcher uh, is performing the, uh, the data analysis uh, in order to look for new biomarkers uh, in particular. Yeah, next slide, please. So um, at, at, the, at the heart, um, 
the, the centerpiece, as, uh, as Gerrit Meijer uh, called it last, uh, last time in Ann Arbor, uh, is Transmart. Uh, that's the tool where we bring uh, those data streams together, but um, we support quite a few other tools uh, for the data acquisition, and you see some of the logos here. In particular, Open Clinica is widely used for clinical data acquisition. We have about uh, 130 st studies using uh, Open Clinica. Okay, next slide, please. So when you look at the, uh, the current uh, trade uh, transmart priorities um, over the last couple of months and, uh, and, the, and the coming uh, couple of months, it's really uh, focused on one thing only, and that's get users on board uh, in transmart. Uh, so um, we have been in the, in the proof of concept uh, phase for a long time, and, um, and we need to get out of it. And um, can you still hear me? Um, Yes, we can. Okay, okay. Sorry, yeah, because my um, my PC died on me. So, <laughs> um, so and 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 the, and the very very priority right now is to um, to get out of this um, situation and um, uh, and and move really to a production status uh, for, for Transmart, huh? like we have for Open Clinica. Um, and um, yeah, the, the actions you see on on this slide are, are really focused on that. Huh? So the the two main um, proof of uh, concepts we have are in in colon and prostate cancer. We already trained the user community there, and now uh, we really ma need to make sure that they are going to use it uh, for for the day to day usage, um, for the day to day research. And one of the key things there is to get uh, get more data uh, on board. For, get more data sets in these domains on board, um, strengthen the user support. Um, we are working on a self-service uh, portal uh, where they can find more information. And um, yeah, using this experience, we are now also extending to other domains. Uh, in particular, we are working on uh, diabe diabetes and uh, lymphoma. That these are probably the two next uh, transmart instances we will bring online. Uh, um, the other thing is, uh, yeah, you saw this previous slide with all these uh, these workflow um, workflows in there, and the other tools we uh, support in trade. So one very important aspect is that we want to uh, link the, the other tools uh, to Transmart. We do a lot of work on that. And finally, one one aspect we work uh, a lot on uh, recently is the um, what we call the cell line uh, data set, which is a um, a full uh, data set with different uh, molecular profiling uh, methods. Uh, which is kind of artificially uh, generated, but has then the advantage that we can share it and use it for uh, for demonstration purposes. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, just a quick a quick uh, shot of the the self-service uh, portal uh, we're bringing online right now. So you see there, um, just like in the workflow uh, slide, you, uh, it's it's um, it's ordered the same way. Uh, you, and you can click on the on the domains you want to have more information on uh, the clinical domain, and then you get to the to, to the uh, all the support materials for Open Clinica, or you click on Transmart, and then you get to all the support materials for Transmart. Huh? So the, the user doesn't need to know the tool, but gets right to the right tool for their problem. Next slide, please. So the the pain on the neck for. Um, uh, for any transmart project, I guess is ETL. Eh? So how to get the data in, uh, on board? Eh? And uh, I guess all the groups um, working on transmart are spending their time uh, on, on, uh, on, on this problem. Um, so we, we uh, dedicated quite some work for, for us to uh, to ETL. I think most um, uh, most heavily resourced uh, part of the of the team uh, right now. And um, yeah, here you see just one example of some work we did. Uh, so um, we we created a separate upload pipeline for for metadata where you can uh, get these uh, these pop-ups and then uh, show definition uh, as it is shown here, and then um, you get the de uh, a view on the data definition as shown on the right hand side. I hope it's still uh, readable. And um, I also uh, provided the GitHub uh, link here uh, to get to more information about this implementation uh, in case you're interested. Next slide, please. Um, I, I, I hope uh, the slides are still running on, uh, in sync uh, because I cannot see them anymore. Huh? But um, I'm looking at the cell line use case right now. 
So the um, th this is really meant uh, to to get a uh, consistent multi-omic data set. So we created a large number of um, of data types, as you can see here on the on the left hand side. Um, we generated the data for it uh, if necessary, and um, uh, used it this to uh, test the ETL pipelines for the various uh, molecular profiling data sets, and uh, in order to test the user interfaces for those uh, uh, those data types. Uh, and on the right hand side of the screen, you see a couple of examples for that. Uh, so uh, the gene print uh, we created, uh, where you can see some um, uh, mutation effects in well known uh, uh, oncogenes, or the um, the uh, the uh, map color mapping, as you see the heat map you see uh, on the top, huh, for some um, uh, microarray data. And so, um, and we intend to. Uh, to publish this data set and to make it publicly available for testing purposes in the community. Yeah. And yeah, we find it very useful for that purpose. Yeah. Next slide, please. So uh, at the heart of the work we're doing are the various interfaces. And one thing we find out, found out that uh, an interface is not necessarily an interface. Uh, yeah. um, so um, various people claim to work on, this, on the same interfaces, for example, XNet or Galaxy but are actually uh, doing quite different things. So it's, um, what I try to outline here is, is, is the work we are doing on, uh, on the various interfaces. Um, and they seem to be complementary to what some other people are doing in the, in the community. So um, for Open Clinica, as, an, uh, as a key tool uh, for our uh, trade network, uh, we created an upload interface to Transmart based on the uh, exi uh, existing RedCap uh, interface. Um, using the uh, DC disk ODM format that's, um, that's exported by Open Clinica. So the advantage is that this interface can be used uh, for by other uh, EC REST systems as well. Uh, and in fact, it's an Open Clinica to I2B2 uh, interface, but that's the, the clinical data model used in, uh, in Transmart. For images, um, uh, we have been working on a um, an uh, upload in interface for the image analysis results. Um, so this is really about the um, the conclusions that can be derived from the images. Uh, something that's still on our wish list is the second bullet here. That's the hyperlink to the actual uh, images. And I understood that uh, Imperial College did quite some work on that. So that seems to be complementary to our work. Um, a third part of uh, activity is in the uh, in the sample linkage uh, domain. So what you really would like is uh, to select uh, biosamples in a Transmart database based on clinical or uh, molecular profiling queries. Um, uh, for example, um, give me all liver uh, metastasis uh, patients um, with an, uh, a genetic disorder in uh, in a certain uh, gene. And, um, and give me all the samples I can, uh, that I can get uh, for these patients. Huh? So then you need to link back to the sample catalog. Um, and that's something we're currently working on. Huh? And ideally, you can even order them from Sunsmart. And uh, then you have really a smooth uh, workflow. Huh? And finally, we're also working on, on the Galaxy, Galaxy link. And basically, that's about. Um, uh, using Galaxy, Galaxy as an alternative for R as a, as, as a way to access uh, bioinformatics pipelines uh, that you can um, call directly from within Transmart. Next slide, please. A particular interface that uh, that is very interesting to us, which is still early days, is uh, the interface to uh, to see BioPortal. This is a really powerful tool that's very much appreciated by uh, tumor biologists. And um, yeah, in the ideal world, the two um, communities will be co connected. Currently, we have really a simple proof of concept interface using a file uh, as an intermediate. But uh, that kind of works. Huh? But uh, yeah, ideally, that will be the starting point for a more intense uh, collaborations. And these uh, these discussions are uh, ongoing, as far as I know. And it will be really nice to uh, to join the two uh, communities. Uh, then we get really a killer app that. Uh, that would uh, draw in large uh, parts of the scientific community into transplants. Huh? Next slide, please. Yeah, so this um, this uh, concludes my uh, quick update on uh, what we're doing in uh, in trade right now. 
um, yeah, this is really a, a large effort, and um, I actually only show a part of the people involved. And I think uh, some of the work that I just showed to you, uh, the, the the people are not on this list. Uh, so I apologize to to those people. Um, if there are any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. Uh. Great, thank you, Jan Willem. So um, at, at at the end of, of our presentation today, we'll have an opportunity uh, to to ask and, and answer questions. In the meantime, if you have specific questions you, that you'd like to pose to Jan Willem about the, the trait uh, project and, and its current activities, feel free to put it into the, the question window as part of this go-to webinar. So next, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, turn uh, the call to an update on the, uh, the architecture roadmap workshop that uh, the Hive recently hosted that uh, brought community members both from Europe as well as the U.S. together to at least make an initial foyer into thinking about a 2.0 uh, architecture for, for Transmart. So with that uh, case, I'd like to turn that over to you and give you the chance to sort of walk us through uh, uh, the workshop and the outcomes and, and next steps around that set of activities. Case? Thanks, Kevin. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so these are the details from the workshop. It was organized from the uh, Transmart Architecture Working Group, which is one of the two working groups in the code stream. Um, all of the people you see here on the list uh, were present, except for Peter Rice, who was uh, calling in from Imperial. Next, please. Um, we had a few goals in this workshop. Uh, the most important one being that we wanted to think of an architectural framework for Transmart 2.0. And to explain this a little bit uh, further, the current version of Transmart, which is stable, mature, and used by, I guess, most of the community is 1.2. But um, there are a number of uh, problems that we saw in 1.2, as well as some user wishes, which affect the whole application um, that we want to account for in the long term. So um, that is why the Transmart 2.0 initiative is started. As of now, this is still a concurrent effort with 1.2, uh, but um, we're really seeing this as a long-term effort for the coming years. Um, importantly, we want to enable the developer community to work together in a more efficient way by um, dividing the architecture of Transmart in a few key pieces. So uh, a clear core, which is something that we all agree on and all need, and as much as po possible, um, anything that's either data-specific, application-specific, um, needs to go into a plugin. Um, I'll give some examples in a minute. Uh, the other important aspect that we talked about is how can we as developers of Transmart um, sort of professionalize the way we work together. Um, so the Transmart community is is quite new if you compare it to some other communities like Linux who have been going on for a long time and also it's a very uh, specific community. We're coming together around translation research and um, one of the things that we saw happening over the course of, um, for example, last year, uh, where we came together around 1.2, is that it's not always easy to integrate the contributions uh, from all the parties that are working on Transmart at the same time. Um, that has to do partly with the architecture, which is why we uh, propose um, a more modularized architecture but it also has to do with um, agreeing on the way of working and how do we how do we deal with things like pull requests on GitHub or uh, how do you deal with the, the style of the code, the, the naming conventions, the, the way the plugins are separated, et cetera, et cetera. The next slide, please. So uh, first of all, about the architecture. Um, 
yeah, this slide says high level view. I realize for this audience, maybe this is already quite low level, but um, essentially um, the core is um, that we propose for Transma 2.0 consists of a number of components that um, actually most of them already exist today in Transmart 1.2, but we're bringing them to 2.0 uh, as the pieces that really need to be there. Um, I want to expand on the Transmart REST API. This is a RESTful API for Transmart which serves uh, both the clinical data and the high dimensional data. And um, what we propose is that all the client application, whether that's a web client or an iPad client or an R client or a Spotfire client or any other types of clients you might have, um, all, all communicate and build on this RESTful API. That's really the major improvement that we propose. Um, we'll be specifying this in more detail in a, a white paper that is the outcome of this workshop and which will be published uh, this week. Um, lastly, um, also important to, to note here is that um, there is a component called Transmart Data which is uh, meant to replace the current ETL procedures for data loading. Uh, until now, we've we've seen a number of ETL frameworks um, being used for Transmart. Uh, partly, of course, deriving from from I2B2 and uh, using Kettle, using stored procedures. Um, but um, our proposal is that we use Transmart data going forward as an ETL framework to build on, which replaces both Kettle and the stored procedures. Next slide, please. Um, so, besides this core, which really is the backend, we also propose um, a major rewrite of the user interface. Um, so, besides the core, which is the backend that will be included in every uh, Transmart application, we propose to um, create a few basic UI components that form the web clients. Um, which basically allow you to do the same things as, as Transmart can do today. So that means code creation, summary statistics, um, an analytics plugin where we bundle all the functionality around advanced analytics, uh, things like heat maps that we have already today in Transmart, uh, a plugin around results that bundles um, the storage of analysis results, think uh, GWAS that we have today and the, the heat map fasted search. And finally, uh, another component that we propose to, to include in the standard distribution is Transmart Batch, um, which is uh, um, basically an ETL tool set on top of Transmart data, which is used to manage the Transmart schema. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a visual representation of, of our proposal. Um, you have the core distribution which includes the backend, the RESTful API, um, and then there is the new UI which contains the ontology tree, the court creation and the summary statistics, as well as a number of plugins uh, which were just listed. Also there will be the possibility to extend the backend with a backend plugin mechanism as well. And next please. We also discuss a number of other uh, elements in the workshop and these will be represented in the white paper as well. Um, the interface for data um, is one of the topics where we talked about a lot, especially about should we enable um, the RESTful API also to really write data, not only read, uh, which is common in, in RESTful interfaces after all. Uh, but we talked about this and, and the current thinking in, in the group that came together is that Transmart still is a data warehouse for clinical genomics research and hence um, is fed via ETL and there, there's a reason and a philosophy behind that so we want to stick with that. At the same time there is still a need to write for example analysis results in a more ad hoc way uh, but we propose to address that with a combination of a backend and a plugin, 
a backend and a frontend plugin for that. Um, about the user interface itself, we propose to use uh, Angular JS. Um, I realize that this means a complete rewrite of the, the user interface as we have it today, and that's a major proposal. Uh, and obviously, that's a pitfall or a potential pitfall. Um, there's a lot of projects that have failed while um, proposing a too extensive rewrite. So this was one of the uh, other major topics we discussed in the workshop, but um, we did conclude that um, building on the current code for the user interface is not a sustainable um, plan for the long run. So we really need to um, propose a new framework for the user interface. The good news is that on the back end, we already have quite a number of things we can build on from 1.2, but um, going forward for the user interface, we will need to do some writing. Next slide, please. Uh, as I said, the way the workshop goes, another major topic is um, how can we professionalize uh, the way we work together as developers in the Transmart community? And um, we, re we realize that today there is a small group of developers that does contribute to the uh, Transmart core on a daily basis. So if you go to GitHub, you can see that in action. You can see who is committing to the code, who is um, contributing code, etc. And um, you will discover that there is a small group of developers that um, almost on a daily basis work on, on Transmart and commit code. And there, there is a, a much larger community of um, occasional contributors in terms of either bug fixes or um, small functionalities. So besides, obviously, the possibilities of creating dedicated plugins, which could even be commercial, um, for the contribution to the core itself, we propose that every uh, contribution goes to uh, GitHub via the pull request mechanism of GitHub. And um, very importantly, uh, we've seen in the past that uh, in some cases there were very large pull requests, so um, containing hundreds of files. Um, that is a situation which uh, we do not want to encounter again because that is very hard to merge. Um, I think I can speak for the developer community that um, we've seen some major contributions, especially from, for example, the IMA ETEX project and Imperial College in trying to work with this and merge all these contributions together, but um, uh, the, the amount of effort that was involved in that is would not be a sustainable way going forward. So we need as developer community to focus on much smaller commits and much more incremental commits uh, which will be uh, bundled and released on a regular basis. Next slide, please. So, in terms of next steps, um, these are of course all great ideas and I, I, I doubt anyone would um, not agree with the plans of having a more modular architecture, for example, but um, can we actually pull this off as developer community, um, considering the funding we currently have, the plan we currently have, etc.? I think that's still an open question, but one thing that we did decide on the workshop is that we want to start with a small proof of concept which would um, exemplify uh, some of our plans and which would show how we want to go forward, especially with uh, the new proposed user interface. Um, so what would that work look like? It would be writing the new proposed UI in, the, the, in Angular, and then the functionality that we'd, we would implement there is simply replicating the concept browsing tree, code selection, and the summary statistics. We feel that this is a, a manageable set of features that we could uh, stand up a proof of concept prototype in a few months and show to the community um, how we think that uh, Transmo 2.0 could look like. Next slide, please. Um, during this implementation, 
um, I'm sure that we will encounter a lot of details and um, questions that as of now are still unanswered. For example, working with the APIs, on working with um, how exactly we want to lay out the plugins and um, as well as setting us on a path that would also enable us to, to do the advanced an analysis as a next step. And um, we think that the most tangible and the most productive way of going forward with this is simply to go ahead and implement this prototype and we will encounter these issues and uh, have to think of a plan for that. Next slide please. Okay, uh, I think, yeah. Great. Looks like uh, I'm through my slides here, but uh, I just want to say that as a next step, um, as a result of this workshop, we will, uh, and we are currently really literally finishing, we have the, the, a stable version of a white paper that describes our ideas. I will propose this white paper uh, to the code committee heads, which is um, Jay Bergeron and Ikiguo, and they will then take this further uh, through the foundation governance. Thank you. Thank you, Case. Uh, Keith, do you, do you want to comment uh, briefly on the uh, the foundation governance process and how this all comes together in terms of enabling the community with a 2.0 architecture? Uh, sure, Kevin. I, I think, you know, as people know when we set up the foundation, uh, the key was gaining community involvement uh, at, at all levels that we can uh, working that <coughs> involvement up through the, the management team and, and to the board of directors directly. Um, at our last board of directors meeting, we uh, initiated the discussions between uh, the three C committees, the code community and content committees, directly with the board of directors. And certainly architecture is one of the, the topics of interest. The way our governance works is the, the code committee, or the, any of the three C committees, are made up of working groups. And those working groups have an open membership. Um, the working groups will then, when they have recommendations for specific things, like the white paper for the version 2 architecture, those are submitted to the, the, the relevant oversight committee. In this case, it's the code committee. Uh, and the code committee chairs, that is E.K. Go and uh, Jay Bergeron, will facilitate a discussion amongst the members of the code committee. Um, the code committee consists of, of the two co-chairs as well as uh, the members uh, that have elected that as part of their membership benefits. So, all of the gold members have uh, representatives on that committee, and then any of the, the silver members that have elected that as their, uh, their key interaction have that interaction. Uh, that committee then takes, you know, takes it under review. If they have uh, comments or suggestions or whatnot, they'll work back with the working group on that. And when they get to the point where they, they have something they feel has is, is got the right uh, viewpoints and, and whatnot represented, um, they can take a vote on that, move that uh, forward, and present that to the board of directors and the management team for review. And the management team works with the, uh, the 3C committees to put that together, and then we have a discussion with the board. With respect to this particular um, effort, um, our goal is to go through this process and be able to have a discussion uh, at the next board of directors meeting, which will be in April. I think it's April 21st, Kevin? Correct. Right? So April 21st uh, here in Boston uh, uh, in conjunction with the BioIT World uh, meeting. So uh, we want to work through this process. I think this is an incredibly important topic for us. Uh, we certainly need to get the full community involvement here. And I think, as, as Kay has mentioned, uh, one of the next steps here is to get the user community involved in thinking about user interfaces and functionality, uh, to engage in some use case exercises, et cetera, and that will be coordinated through the uh, community committee and engagement there. Uh, but in terms of governance, it's really working from the working group to the, the oversight 3C committee, uh, to the management team, and then to the board of directors. Does that make sense, Kevin? It does. Thank you for, for, for that context and how we, as you, you said and as Case outlined, uh, how we bring this important initiative forward, which is important to, uh, to I, I think, all of the community that, that is working with the, with the platform. Yeah, and I think it's important that every, you know, all the members, the entire membership has an opportunity at some level to, to interrogate and be part of the process, and that's really the key that the foundation is trying to Great. Thank you, Case, or, or Keith. Um, moving on uh, to, to things that are a little more near-term, um, 
in, in terms of the version 1.2 platform, which is the current release of, of Transmart, uh, we have uh, initiated a, a bug fix-a-thon, which uh, we talked about last month. And uh, Terry Weymouth, who's been very involved in helping to drive that forward, is going to uh, provide an update for us today. So, Terry, take it away. Fire away. <laughs> um, so, as you know, the current uh, 1.2 release has a number of bugs, um, and there are currently uh, 81 issues in the JIRA. That's actually been reduced from 96 last month, so we're making progress. But it's still a big list of bugs. It's also been brought to our attention on several occasions that unreported bugs have appeared in demos and training sessions. So if you know of any bugs, don't hesitate to email me, email Kevin, email Keith, or if you have access to JIRA, submit, a, submit the bug report to JIRA. We'll sort out whether that re bug report has already been reported, but um, we're trying to get coverage here. So the goals of the bug fix-a-thon is to thoroughly test the current 1.2 base, identify as many bugs as possible, and then fix them. In the, in the process of doing that, we will establish, refine, publish a bug fixing and bug, fi bug fix release process. I'm working on a draft of that. And we want to regularize the list of JIRA items. So that is part of the process we're going through is just triage, getting duplicate items out of the way, and so on. Next. Um, a bug patch release will be made this week. I'm actually in the middle of that process right now. It should be done by the end of the day. Um, the next bug patch release will be mid-April. Um, the, there's been a number of contributions from the community, community going into this bug patch. Um, in particular, we've had 78 commits from nine programmers um, yeah, during the last month. Testing is underway. There's a set of standard scripts on the wiki that's being updated as we go. We're using the test servers that we have. Um, and we're frantically trying to get all of the test data sets together in the background. Um, that's work that Yanni and Peter and I and others have participated in. Next slide. We're operating more or less on a two-week cycle, um, and this will get a little more concrete as we move into the second phase. So there will be four two-week cycles between uh, now and the April 15th release. Um, and as I said, uh, the bug fix patch 1.2.4 is going to be released today. Um, we're using the JIRA tickets as our task list, um, and we are working directly on the um, tickets and on the uh, scripts for testing. Next slide. Um, there's a twice-weekly teleconference which actually we're mounting as a webinar. It meets every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time this week, Eastern Daylight Time next week, except, of course, for the Tuesdays of the community calls. And the call is largely to discuss priorities, uh, pinpoint problems, assign tasks, and report progress. If you're interested, um, this is the registration URL. I understand that that might be a little difficult to copy down, so uh, please email me or Kevin or Keith to get the information um, and get yourself on the call. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, just as a reminder, 
the the teleconference is at 11 a.m. Eastern time. I, I believe, Carrie, you may have said one o'clock, unless I misheard you. But but again, it's at 11 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, uh, you can register to participate uh, through GoToWebinar. And as Carrie mentioned, you can contact him directly, me, and and we'll we'll get you hooked up. So to keep our call uh, moving today, we still have a couple more things to work through. We'll do a, a train update. This is a, an initiative that from the foundation side of things, Rudy Poton's own um, is, is leading. He's been working with Rancho Biosciences and I think has been in discussion with other organizations around developing a, a training program that actually kicks off uh, this month. And as you see on the screen, and you can go to transmartfoundation.org slash training. Uh, uh, Rudy has arranged with Rancho Biosciences to offer 90-minute uh, uh, training sessions that begin this coming February 23rd and then um, are, are monthly through the calendar year. So this is an introductory training class. Uh, we can accommodate up to 100 people per training uh, session. And these uh, uh, training sessions um, are scheduled at uh, alternating times between uh, noon Eastern and 10 a.m. Eastern uh, throughout the course of the year. In addition to that, uh, Rudy's been working with our um, um, service providers out in the community that provide training around Transmart to develop more advanced training, both in the area of administration, but around, also around advanced user training. These will be uh, significantly longer events, and notably, they will also be fee-based. So if you are interested in the, the training that the foundation is putting together, if you have suggestions, if you're interested in teaming with the foundation to put together or extend the, the training program that uh, Rudy is already working to put in-place, please consider getting in touch with, with Rudy at rudy.potenzone at transmartfoundation.org. And again, this information is out on the foundation's uh, website at transmartfoundation.org slash training. We'll do a quick walkthrough of uh, calendar activities uh, for 2015. These include the uh, ongoing or the, the Molecular Med Tri Conference that is occurring right now. And so Rudy is um, actually in San Francisco, as Keith mentioned, and is, is hosting uh, the Foundation's first booth at, at a conference. So we'll show a couple of pictures on, on, on that in a moment. As we talked uh, last month and as Keith mentioned, we are working to organize a, a datathon that is focused on neurodegenerative disease, particularly uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but uh, the whole spectrum of neurodegenerative diseases are potentially in play for this datathon that is being organized for the dates of April 7 through 9. A couple weeks later, we have BioIT World coming up in Boston. And then we are currently planning the uh, 2015 annual meeting that will be based in Europe. As Keith mentioned, we're trying to finalize the venue for that among sites that uh, are either in the UK or in the Netherlands. Other upcoming conferences of interest include the uh, Ninth World Congress on Controversies in Neurology that will be hosted in Budapest, Hungary in March. There is the Alzheimer's Association International Conference that uh, will occur in Washington, D.C. in July. And then there is the 2015 Brain Informatics and Health Conference that will be in London in late August, early September. So you should uh, see on your screen, uh, this is the Transmart Foundation booth that uh, Rudy has put together that includes um, uh, handouts uh, on the foundation and the community, 
as well as other information. Here we see a, a photo, I think taken yesterday as Rudy uh, was getting the booth set up and, and kicked off for today. A bit more detail that I think we've talked about in the past in terms of the upcoming datathon in Boston in uh, early April, the Neurodegenerative Diseases Datathon, where the foundation is working with Michael J. Fox Foundation to pull together. We'll, um, we anticipate about 20 scientists active in neurodegenerative disease coming together. Some of the organizations that have indicated interest and in participated beyond the Michael J. Fox Foundation and Trent Hunt Foundation include University of Michigan, uh, Sanofi, Pfizer, Takeda, as well as colleagues in the University of Luxembourg. This is not necessarily a comprehensive list of organizations that have expressed interest, but uh, they include uh, some of the groups that, that are actively planning to, to be in Boston for this event. As Keith mentioned, we um, are planning that the ADNI and PPMI data sets that um, Michael J. Fox is working with Thomson Reuters to load into Transmart 1.2 will provide the foundation uh, for the, the data sets made available for this datathon. Additional data sets that um, uh, may be made available for this event include the LRRK2 and BioFind data sets as well as possible uh, Parkinson's uh, geo data sets. From a platform and analytics point of view, as already been mentioned, Transmart 1.2 will form the basis for the, the capabilities that uh, will be available in Boston for this event. And then we're also looking at bringing a number of statistical visualization pathway and genomics viewers uh, to uh, to the datathon to really support the, the discovery and analytics that uh, we expect to go on at that time. And Perkin Elmer will be uh, contributing for this particular event the work it's done around the platform in terms of integrating Spotfire. So more details on that will be shared with the community as we get closer to uh, the April event. We're also planning to, to provide some training one to two weeks ahead of time on Transmart and the other tools. And then if you are um, or your organization has an interest in participating in the datathon, Rudy has put together on the foundation website a questionnaire that you can complete that will formalize um, uh, and be a mechanism for communicating your interest in, in, in uh, attending the event. Moving on, coming up uh, in later in April around BioIT World uh, 2015, we are organizing a number of events that will occur on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Those events start with a board of directors meeting that will occur on the 21st from 9 to 11. Importantly, for those of you who are on the call and who will be in Boston, we will have our next set of face-to-face -face 3C committee meetings, the code committee, the content committee, and community committee will occur in the afternoon on the 21st. We're working to, to obtain uh, venues for that, but they will be uh, in the seaport um, uh, area adjacent to the bio IT world activities. Also, uh, for your information, we will uh, have um, a, a booth that uh, will be manned on both Tuesday and, and Wednesday, but importantly, uh, on the evening of Wednesday, April 22nd, we will have our community meeting where this year the focus will be on content, what, what um, the community as a whole can bring together around content. So last year, the community meeting at BioIT World focused on the release of of 1.2 and was very platform oriented this year, we're looking at a content theme. And then to round things out, in addition to the, to the exhibit hall and the booth that the foundation will have on the, the 23rd, there will be a presentation on the platform that will be part of track 10 focused on collaboration and open access.
We are also looking into the possibility of organizing some sort of training activity, and we will update uh, you uh, next month during the March call on, on what that may look like. So with that, we've come to the end of our, our structured uh, presentations and really want to open um, up whatever remaining time we have uh, to questions that we could answer for the community. It's 12 o'clock, but uh, we, we certainly have time to, to take a question or two. So it looks like... Uh, um, Gil Oman has a question related to uh, um, C BioPortal, so why don't I go ahead, um, Gil, if you're still on the phone, why don't I uh, unmute you and give you the chance to um, uh, articulate your question? Okay. Can you hear me? We sure can. Good. First of all, thanks to everybody. There's a lot of progress and there's a lot of anticipation uh, for the Boston gathering and then the uh, work that will go on all year leading to this new platform for 2.0. My question was pretty simple and I've already gotten a response, which is the C bio portal that was identified by uh, Jan Willem about uh, a highly useful application for uh, cancer biology. And the answer is that it's uh, highly available as a standard tool in many labs. So it's good to know that that is uh, highly recommended. I also have sent some information to some of you, uh, input from Gustavo Glusman at Institute for Systems Biology, who's been a pretty regular participant on these calls, and of course uh, ISB is one of the member organizations, uh, about uh, uh, clarifying some of the challenges in installing Transmart as perceived by others than software developers. So I think we'll get a lot of work done on that dimension also. Thank you. Thank you all. Great. Yeah, I think on that deal, just to follow up, um, Kevin, maybe next time we can have uh, Terry take people through a quick way to access the online uh, demo and the virtual machine images for the platform and just give people a quick introduction. So can you stick on the agenda for next time? Absolutely. And I've also signed up already for the February 23 training for myself. Great. So other, other questions um, that... that uh, uh, you may have, um, please raise your hand if, if you have a question. We'll unmute you or, uh, as Gil has done, type your question into the question window. Okay. I don't see any additional questions uh, popping up. Um, Keith, as CEO of the Foundation, why don't we give you uh, the last word for today's call? Okay. Uh, thanks, Kevin, for organizing. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Um, I think uh, we have a lot of things that are, are ongoing and a lot of very interesting things happening. Yeah, so, uh, just getting off the previous conference call. Just to so I, I encourage I encourage everyone to, to be actively engaged and involved. I think uh, you know we have some other things coming up through governance that I think are quite important, and we'll be having uh, the 3C committees meeting at the BioIT World. So, so make sure you get engaged. And uh, if you have an interest in being more engaged than you are already, contact the 3C co-chairs, you know, Kevin uh, and Sherry for community, uh, EK and Jay for uh, code, and then uh, finally um, uh, Brian and Julie for, for content. With that, thanks everyone for coming, and uh, we'll see you next month.